Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Everybody don't seem to be a well. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dr. Kaiser A. Callwood, Chief Strategy Officer, Acting Public Information Officer for the Virgin Islands Bureau of Correction. And it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the official renaming ceremony of the John A. Bell Adult Correctional Facility. We will move our program right along and we will begin with the National Anthem and the Virgin Islands March, which will be sung by Sasha Alexander. I'm asking the audience to please remain standing until she's finished doing those two anthems followed by the invocation by Pastor Gerald A. Williams. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we've watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air and gave proof through the night that our flag was still there no who say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the of the sea where beaches bright with coral sands and trade winds bless on native lands all hail our virgin islands bathing waters blue we give a loyalty full to thee and pledge allegiance forever true God bless our virgin islands, humbly now we pray, where all mankind can join today, in friendly warmth of work and play. God bless our virgin islands, beautiful and tall, Beneath the sunny skies, hilltops high, hold out a welcome for one day. Oh. Thank you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You made the whole world for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth, of things seen and unseen. Almighty God, we praise your omnipresence. You are everywhere, and we invoke your presence among us. Creator, we praise your omnipotence. You have all power and authority, and we submit ourselves to you for guidance and protection. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, you are omniscient. You know everything. We thank you for your knowledge and for your wisdom that you did not keep to yourself, but imparted to us. We recognize you as the source 
of all that is good. You are the source of all our blessings, and we give you thanks for every gift that you've given to us. We especially give you thanks for this facility of rehabilitation, and we pray that justice will continue to flow like waters and righteousness, like an ever-flowing stream throughout this facility. Almighty God, you have blessed each and every one of us with unique gifts and talents, and have called us into specific occupations, relationship, and activity using these gifts. We thank you for the talent and wisdom that you've bestowed upon the Honorable John Bell and the services he has rendered to our community by virtue of his many, many vocations. We thank you for the opportunity to gather here today for this auspicious ceremony, and we ask that you be with us now as we officially rename this facility. Grant us faith to know your gracious purpose in all things. Give us joy in them and lead us to building up your kingdom to your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, we all say, Amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Williams. Everyone may be seated at this time. I have the distinct opportunity to introduce special individuals that are here with us. We'll begin by recognizing the Honorable Albert Bryan Jr., Governor, U.S. Virgin Islands. <laughs> the Honorable Tregenza A. Roach, Esquire, Lieutenant Governor, U.S. Virgin Islands. We have representing the President of the Legislature, Senate Vice President Honorable Novel E. Francis Jr. We also have representing Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett, uh, Ms. Tioni Scotland, Communications Director. We have the Honorable Alicia Chucky Hansen, former Senator. And I'll, I have somebody to recognize, but I'll leave them for last. In the audience, we have Deputy Chief of Staff, Kevin Rodriguez. We have Director of the Office of Management and Budget, the Honorable Jennifer C. O'Neill. We have Ms. Adrian Octolin, Williams Octolin, the Director of the Office of Disaster Recovery. We have Daryl Jashin, the Director of the Virgin Islands Emergency Management Agency. We have Ms. Avril George, Assistant Commissioner representing um, Derek Gabriel, Commissioner of the Department of Public Works. We also have Genevieve Wickedker, Legislative Secretary and Senator in the 34th Legislature. We also have to recognize my esteemed director, Honorable Winnie Testamark, who has the job of really leading us here at the Virgin Islands Bureau of Correction. I also want to recognize her Assistant Director of Administration and Compliance, Mr. Riel Faulkner Esquire. And all the BOC staff, too numerous to mention, you see them all throughout the activity. Please stand and be recognized by everyone here today, if you can. Your some standing, thank you. At this time, I would welcome for remarks the Honorable Winnie Testamark, Director, Virgin Islands Bureau of Corrections. Director Testamark. Good morning, everyone. Thanks again um, for being here. Honorable Governor Bryan, my boss, Bryan Jr., the governor. Honorable Trojanja Roach, Lieutenant Governor. Honorable members of the 34th Legislature of the Virgin Islands, members of the Governor's Cabinet, distinguished guests, neighbors, family, and friends. Welcome to the official renaming ceremony of the John Bell A. Adult Correctional Facility. Ladies and gentlemen, it is powerful to be remembered in the place that was yours. The Virgin Islands is John Bell Sr.'s place. And to, lesser, to a lesser degree, 
so too is this place, long known as Golden Grove, where he served briefly as director of the Bureau of Corrections. We gather today to honor a, a son of the soil whose lifetime of service shaped the Virgin Islands and opened up doors of opportunity that made it better, a better place for all. When I learned in 2019 that Golden Grove, as everyone called it, actually had been renamed in 2014 to honor him, I knew how important it was that we hold this ceremony. It was important that to put to the world, uh, to, put the, um, to, the, to put the world on notice, I'm sorry, to put the world on notice that this facility is not named for a place, but for a person whose enormous contributions to the Virgin Islands deserve to be recognized. I also knew how important it was that we act quickly so that Senator John Bell witnessed to this ceremony, but COVID-19 reared its ugly head in 2020 and everything had to be postponed. I am thankful that eight years later, after the legislature passed Act Number 7645, Senator Alicia Chucky Hansen resolution renaming Golden Grove after him, and more than two years after Governor Bryan and I first envisioned holding this ceremony to put the world on notice that this place bore his name, Senator John Bell is present today to witness this outpouring of gratitude, love, and respect. I want to thank Senator Bell's I want to thank Senator Bell's family especially for their patience and their willingness to work with the bureau to make this day a reality. I also want to thank Governor Albert Bryan Jr. for his commitment and dedication in recognizing Virgin Islanders who have made a difference in the quality of lives of our residents. It is fitting that this place should bear his name for his life is a testament to the power of positive change. I think it is altogether appropriate and wonderful that this facility, which is dedicated to transforming lives, should bear the name of a man who was once labeled as a chronic truant and whose mother begged the authorities to send him to a school for delinquent boys in order to save him. Senator John Bell's life is the classic example of a life transformed by love, by compassion, and by force of will. It is only right and proper that a man who transformed his own life and worked tirelessly to transform the lives of other countless others should have his name affixed to a correctional facility that is committed to transforming the lives of those entrusted to its care. In December 2018, Senator Bell received the Virgin Islands Medal of Honor, one of the highest honors that can be bestowed by the Virgin Islands government. It was surely one of the high points of his life. But his first impulse on receiving this award was to think of others, not himself. Overcome with emotions, he said, and I quote, there are so many people missing from here today, thousands of them. This medal belongs to them, end quote. That tells you everything you need to know about the man we honor today and whose name this facility now bears. Service to others before service to self. So, Senator Bell, this is your place. It bears your name and there is power in being remembered here. On behalf of the men and women of the Bureau of Corrections, thank you for your service, for your selflessness, and for blazing a path that we can follow. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Director Testamark. We'll continue with our program. I know everyone is so excited for all the things that we have to offer here at the Virgin Islands Bureau of Correction. At this time, I would like to welcome to the mic BOC Sergeant Dana Grant, and she'll be reading the reading of Act Number 7645 that started the whole entire process. Sergeant Grant. 
Good morning, the Honorable Albert Bryan Jr., Governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands, Honorable Tregenza A. Roach, Esquire, Lieutenant Governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands, Senate Vice President, Honorable Novel E. Francis, and the mem 30 members of the 34th Legislature, Honorable Alicia Chucky Hansen, former Senator, Honorable Winnie Testamark, Director, and Honorable Warden Ben Adams. Act number 7645. An act honoring and commending former Senator John Bell retired for his service and dedication to the people of the Virgin Islands by awarding him the Medal of Honor and by naming the correctional facility located in Este Golden Grove on the island of St. Croix in his honor. Whereas John A. Bell Sr., the son of Isabella Christopher and Sidney A. Bell was born on November 18, 1931. And whereas, as a youth, John Bell did not have a father figure to inspire and guide him and was labeled a chronic truant. And whereas, John Bell attended various elementary schools in St. Thomas, such as Thomas Jefferson School, Abraham Lincoln School, George Washington School, Dover School, and James Madison School before his mother begged the Department of Social Welfare to send him to a school for delinquent boys in order to save him. And whereas at the age of 13, John Bell was sent to the Calabash Boom School for delinquent boys on the island of St. John, which eventually closed and moved along with all the students to the island of St. Thomas and was renamed the Mandal School. And whereas because of his leadership proficiency at the Mandal School, John Bell became a junior counselor at the pay rate of $15 per month. And whereas John Bell spelled, spent one year in seventh grade and was promoted to the ninth grade due to his hard work and his proficiency levels at the Mandal School. And whereas, after completing the ninth grade at the Mandal School, John Bell was more focused on his education and wanted to change. So he requested and was granted the opportunity to go to a Catholic school. And whereas, John Bell attended and graduated from St. Peter's and Paul High School in 1953. And whereas, after graduating from high school, Mr. Bell was once again hired as a junior counselor at the Mandal School for $30 per month. And whereas, Mr. Bell was drafted to the U.S. Army in 1953 and was inducted into the Army in 1954. Mr. Bell completed his tour of duty in 1956 and returned to the island of St. Thomas. And whereas, after returning from his tour of duty in the Army, Mr. Bell made a request to be re-employed in the position he held as a junior counselor at the Mandal School. However, Mr. Bell was notified that the school had been relocated to the island of St. Croix. And while the position was still available, he would be required to relocate to the island of St. Croix. Therefore, Mr. Bell moved to St. Croix to pursue the position. And whereas in an effort to further his education, Mr. Bell enrolled and was accepted to the Politics Institute in San Helaman, Puerto Rico, and subsequently went on to the Inter-American University in Puerto Rico with the help of the GI Bill. And whereas, while still attending Inter-American in University, Mr. Bell received an invitation from Earl B. Otley to organize a revolution to take control of the social and political issues affecting the Virgin Islands at this time which were being controlled by a handful of socially and economically elite Virgin Islanders referred to as the royal family, who controlled the banks, businesses, jobs, housings, and schools in the Virgin Islands. And whereas, in 1966, Mr. Bell left the Inter-American University in Puerto Rico to join and become one of the founders, which was created to take back control of the Virgin Islands from the royal family, who made an attempt to regain control through a political group they call Victory 66. And whereas the Motor and Pestle and uni Unity Movement successfully defeated Victory 66, taking back control of the Virgin Islands. And whereas John is a dedicated family man, mar married to Gloria Bell, and is a proud father of John A. Bell Jr., Gina Bell, Jason Bell, Anthony Bell, Doreen Bell, and John Mercer Bell. And whereas over the years, John Bell has made it his duty to assist those in need. Mr. Bell has assisted in the rescue of several people during Hurricane David and Frederick and the aftermath by assisting in cleanup of the raw sewage in homes assisting residents in getting food and government assistance. 
He assisted in the search and rescue of passengers when an American Airlines plane crashed at the airport in St. Thomas. He assisted some family members with escaping from a burning home. He assisted with the evacuation of residents from the Lyndon B. Johnson housing projects when a potentially deadly gas was accidentally released by the WAPA. And whereas Mr. John A. Bell served six terms as a senator in the legislature of the Virgin Islands from 1975 to 1982 and 1985 to 1986. And whereas Mr. John A. Bell should be recognized for his service and commitment to the people of the Virgin Islands by receiving a Medal of Honor and naming the correctional facility located in Estate Golden Grove on the island of St. Croix in his honor. Now therefore, being enacted by the legislature of the Virgin Islands, section one, the legislature of the Virgin Islands on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands honors and commends Mr. John A. Bell for his career accomplishments and for his public service, integrity, dedication, perseverance, and his undying passion for the welfare of the Virgin Islands community. Section two, in recognition and appreciation of his contributions to the people of the Virgin Islands, the president of the legislature shall prepare a perma plaque copy of this act, which shall be presented to John A. Bell or his designee by the president of the legislature at an appropriate ceremony naming the correctional facility located in Estate Golden Grove on the island of St. Croix in his honor and bestowing him with a medal of honor for his outstanding public service to the people of the Virgin Islands as authorized in Title I Virgin Islands Code. Thus passed by the legislature of the Virgin Islands on July 28, 2014. Thank you, Sergeant Grant. That's a lot of reading. Give her another round of applause. She did an awesome job. Awesome. I also have to recognize some individuals. Blame it on my mind and not my heart. I wanted to recognize Warden Ben Adams. Also in the audience, um, Assistant Director of the Division of Personnel, Florine Ordain Hassel. We also have former Delegate to Congress, Donna Christensen. We have the CEO of the Virgin Islands Public Broadcasting Agency, Tanya Marie Singh. We also have former Senator Diane Capehart in the audience. And I don't see anyone else. So once I recognize that you're here, I will come back and recognize you. That's what we do on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands. Right, Director? Thank you. As we move along with the remarks, we want to welcome to the podium and the mic the Honorable Alicia Chucky Hansen, former Senator and Bill Sponsor of Bill Number 30-0428, now Act Number 7645. Senator Hansen. Greetings. What's in the name? Honorable Governor of the Virgin Islands, Albert Bryan Jr., Lieutenant Governor Tregenza Roach, greetings. Our distinguished clergy, Pastor Williams, Senate Vice President and Acting President today, uh, Novel Francis, from the office of the Congresswoman, Ms. Cutland, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Bell. And Senator Bell, uh, the Bureau's Director, Ms. Testamark, all other distinguished platform guests, the Governor's Cabinet, greetings to you, family, members of the media, can't forget you because we want you to write up something nice. <laughs> <laughs> to the children of the Honorable Senator Bell, please stand and be recognized. Thank you all so much. And I observe his former staff. I don't know how many are here, but definitely. Oh my God, please stand up and be recognized. Oh, there's another one in the back too. Dr. Kaiser, greetings. And uh, let me just say this. What the young lady just read is a 
long resolution, but it is not even a quarter of what this great man has done, John A. Bell. When I began to write that resolution, all I can think of is what's in the name of a building? What is in the name? You can't make any joke when you do a resolution. I happen to be one of the longest serving senators in the Virgin Islands, okay? And so I take it very seriously. Can be anything on anything. You have to show contribution to this territory. Janet Bell represent what many across the nation wish they had on their correctional facilities. If we know our American history, we are aware that most prisons are named after slave masters. Okay? Where you had the white man impregnating a black woman against her will. Where you had the black woman take her breast and having to feed a white baby that was not hers against her will. And so today across America, they are trying to change that and take off those names off of those correctional facilities. Right? You agree with that? But here in the Virgin Islands, we had to do that. Because it was named the Bureau, and now it's going to be named after John A. Bell, as we did in 2014. Now, you keep hearing this 2014. And you heard our distinguished director indicate that two years ago, they was going to have the commemoration of unveiling his name on this property. What she did not tell you was, and that's because she is not aware, because she just came in under this administration, right? So she's not aware that from 2014, there was no pandemic. Hello? <laughs> and therefore, we have to thank the person who directed, once I told him, that man behind me, and I hope you stand behind him, especially the family, because you feel so great about that resolution. His Medal of Honor, the highest honor in the Virgin Islands and across Washington is this medal. But it was not complete until what we're doing today because of our governor, Albert Bryan Jr. and Tregenza Roche. Please stand. So all that I did would have gone in vain had it not been by the governor, persistence. Because you did put up, Ms. Testamark is signed, right? And um, the governor was not pleased. He said, what's going on? I heard, and, and I had to even call Reggie Bell and tell him, look, the governor is upset. She did the right thing, put up what the law required. But everyone who has received the names on a building has had a ceremony like this. So the governor said, what is going to be done with Senator Bell? He deserves more. He deserves more. You hear what I'm saying, Gina? He deserves more. And then, Junior, huh? He deserves more, right? He deserves more? Right, okay, thank you. So once he deserves more, 
This is what we have here today. And therefore, you ought to recognize it didn't just happen. It did not just happen. So he could have just come and you see the sign up and that's it. No. He deserved to know that people love him. He deserved to know that people are here for him. He deserves to know why. Oh, stand, Jennifer. Stand. Just stand. And be recognized. You all stand. He stood up. You stand. Oh, my God. He stood up. You stand. God bless you. Senator Bell, for all you have done for this community beyond the call of duty that we were required to do as senators in the legislature. You went beyond what you have been called and paid for for this community. And as such, we honor you here today. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. And God bless the Virgin Islands. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant. Kaiser, listen, the way you work this out, I know you look tired today, but you did an awesome job. Thank you. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. I can't take the full credit by myself. I have to thank the director. Because I know it's not easy working with me and planning activities. So I really like to thank the director. I think we fell out 10 times already. Um, however, that's my girl. I'm not going anywhere. Leave her. So I'm publicly letting everybody know I'm not going anywhere. Leave director. Test the mark. As we move along with the program, I want to welcome the son of Mr. John A. Bell. I know we have all the other children here, but everybody wouldn't be able to speak as we'll not leave here today. But I want to welcome Mr. Anthony Sergi Bell um, to give some remarks on behalf of, on, on behalf of his dad. Uh, morning, morning. <laughs> My daughter tell me I got to talk proper, but I can only talk the way to talk. <laughs> Bef while I thank the governor, I want King Dobby, Bobby James, and Charles will come up front. Governor, thank you. Oh, Chucky tell her something, but she didn't tell her all. The farmer governor refused to do this. Ah. I gonna say because me in free. We tell him, Governor, thank you. These three guys, especially Dobby and Bobby, being with him from the time he came here from a little boy. Charlo work with him. Charlo is the one that trained me when I became a correction officer. Don't talk too long. Well, it was plain and simple. We come to do a... Once you come and you step in my mat, it's peace and love and caring. Because when I don't train you, you get rough tumble a couple of times well. So you're not going to let nobody do that to you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, morning, morning. Yeah. From the time John came to St. Croix, John wanted me to run, oh, to run as a senator. But as coward as I am, I never did. So I encouraged him uh, to run because we used to have meetings at St. Mary's Hall. But I'm not a man of many words, but I want to say that John has been a great inspiration to me, especially during my uh, term as, as uh, Governor uh, John De Young's campaign manager. I had to seek his advice, and it was wonderful. John, you're the best. You're well deserved. Bobby. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Me and John, we come from way, 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 way back. Uh, I remember I had a song, and I sang it, and John Bell tell me, uh, Dob, you go compete with that. But I said, John, then you want me to lose. So John said, well, you could afford to lose because you win a hoop crown already anyhow. And I sang it, and I won with it. This, a lot of people don't know this guy really. The founder of Calypso Inc., he was he was very instrumental, which is a non-profit organization, running over 40 years now. He helped with the children, 
I mean, and then we create a team named the Orioles because in those days we had a big time but our players and the little boys them couldn't get a chance to play. We played for two years in the league. We never win one game self. So, but <laughs> the point is that they was introduced to baseball. Then me and John Bennett, again in horse racing. Because I rode for 15 years. I was Jackie for 15 years. So me and John come way, way back. And John always tell me, say, Dobbs, don't know nobody discourage you what you're doing. Sing. One time, all the jingles that ever, while John Bell was in office, I did them. We had a problem that he bring in, say, you're going to bring in a K9 dog. I said, John, you'll lose. The people on the street start to talk. He bring in dog to bite up our children. That same year, he lost. <laughs> I won him. <laughs> People didn't prepare for that. Then he bring up a next one again. He wanted to bring back. They hanging in Gallows Bay. I said, John, you lose again. <laughs> I know what he mean. I mean, he's, he's for discipline. In other words, he's trying to do anything to keep our children together. Not that he's against our children. This is a great man. and this, I mean, among the things... If I had to say how are we done, we're going to dealt it tomorrow morning around this time. So it's a short and brief, but John, John B. Yes, He's my hero, man. We come from way back, man. I won't tell him the rest we do, but we keep that for later. Yeah, I want to thank the director of the prison, and I have to thank Chucky. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so I guess, Sergi, you have to deal with your daughter. Where is she? Where's your daughter? Is she here? So you'll deal with him in the car, right? Okay. I just also want to recognize the other children of Mr. John A. Bell Sr. If you're here, please stand. John A. Bell Jr. Gina Bell. Is Jason Bell here? I know Anthony Bell, um, Jorraine Bell, and John Mercer Bell. They are not here, but of course they're here listening. Uh, by the way, we have the ceremonies being um, live on um, 107.9 The Vibe. We also have AM 970. We have the Virgin Islands Public Broadcasting System recording it, which will be played back. WTJX, thank you, CEO Singh. I really appreciate that. And of course, the Government Access Channel. You guys are awesome. As we move along with the program, um, we had on a program former Senator Ivers to drive in Esquire. However, the flight was canceled. However, at the Bureau of Corrections, we are versatile and flexible. And our Assistant Director of Administration and Compliance, Mr. Riel Faulkner, will provide the remarks for Mr. Strudiron. Assistant Director. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so good morning to all. This is from um, former Senator Ivers Strudiron. I regret that I could not secure an airline reservation from St. Thomas to join you today to participate in the renaming of the Golden Grove Adult Correctional Facility as the John A. Bell Adult Correctional Facility. Senator Bell is well deserving of that honor. In brief, Senator Bell and I served together in the 17th legislature, I as president and he as vice president. In addition, although I did not know Senator Bell earlier, he nevertheless had an impact on me during my childhood days because he served as a counselor at the former Mandel School for Boys on St. Thomas. My eldest brother, Gilbert Stradiron, now deceased, was one of the delinquents housed for a time in that facility. And we as his siblings would occasionally visit Gilbert there. That experience most certainly scared me straight <laughs> because the very stern counselors, especially John Bell, always made it abundantly clear that we didn't want to become one of the delinquent boys. During my 1980s relationship with Senator Bell in the legislature, I was fortunate because he always had my back. 
He was the one senator who provide me, provided me with sage advice in all matters legislative. John, as I affectionately called him, took his job as both a senator, youth counselor, and overall a servant of the people seriously. Of course, one cannot overlook his humorous side. John could have all our colleagues in the legislature in stitches with his one-liners. Senator John Bell is richly deserving of having his many contributions to the territory memorialized. Thus, the renaming of this facility is appropriate. Congratulations, John. Ivor Strad Island. Thank you. Thank you for that, Assistant Director Faulkner. As we move along with the program, I would like to welcome for remarks 34th Legislature Senator, Senate Vice President, the Honorable Novel E. Francis, Jr. Thank you very much, Mr. of Ceremony, Master of Ceremony, that is, Dr. Callwood, Governor Bryan, Lieutenant Governor Roach, Secretary Whitaker, former Senator Hansen, former Senator Cape Hard, Director Testamart, of course, our Reverend Clergy, other distinguished members, Honorary John A. Bell Sr., family, friends, and well wishes. Good morning, or well, as we say here in the Virgin Islands, good morning. Good morning. I'm honored to be here today on the behalf of Senate President Donna Fred Gregory, who extend her best wishes to former Senator John A. Bell and his family on the official renaming of the correctional facility. While I was not a member of the 38th legislature when the bill to honor Senator Bell was passed, I was privileged to join my colleagues in the 32nd legislature in December of 2018 for the presentation of a perma plaque on Act 7645 and the Virgin Islands Medal of Honor to this distinguished gentleman. And I spent the entire 32nd legislature listening to Senator Hansen every opportunity she had to ask, when is this facility going to be named after John A. Bell? Every time. As a young boy growing up in St. Croix, I remember that Senator John Bell was a giant in local politics. He stood larger than life and embodied what elected officials should be. He was approachable, hardworking, and dedicated to service. As a matter of fact, I remembered as a teenager attending the Elena Christian Junior High School, and I was inspired by something that Senator Bell had done or said. I don't remember what it is. It was 40 years ago, Governor. We getting old. <laughs> but that inspiration drove me to go down to his office, walk from Elena Christian, and walk down to his office. And of course, um, the legislature was down there in, in Bassin Triangle area at the time. And I went to his office and asked, what can I do? to support your re-election. I got construction paper, a stencil, a marker, and I made up some signs. Vote for John A. Bell. I was so inspired by whatever he had done. It is a full circle moment for me that I was at the plaque presentation, and I'm here today for the official naming of the John A. Bell Correctional Facility. Senator Bell has attested to his tough life as a young boy growing up in the post-World War II Virgin Islands, and to his days at Mandel School, which was a school for delinquent boys. Back then, John Bell knew there was something better for him. His leadership was recognized, and he became a counselor at the Mandel School. He went on to complete his high school, served in the US Army, and attended college before taking the leap into politics. He was the epitome of his success story. It means a lot when a person's name is placed on a building, public building. For those men and women housed at the John A. Bell Adult Correctional Facility, I hope knowing more about this man inspires them to overcome their challenges, to move past their troubled beginnings, and always aim for self-improvement with a goal of being the best person they can be in this community. Every accolade given to former Senator John Bell is highly deserved. I'm honored to be able to close the circle with the official renaming of the John A. Bell Senior Correctional Facility. As a public servant, 
For over 33 years, it warms my heart to see that public service has not gone unnoticed, and we are paying tribute to this giant of a politician. My thanks to Director Winnie Testamark and the Bureau of Corrections team, as well as the governor, and very importantly to Senator Hansen, again for the resolution, and finally, Senator Chucky <laughs> Hansen for Act 7645, and for her keep banging the drum about making sure that this facility was properly named. Today, on behalf of the 34th legislature, and I'll ask the Senate uh, pres um, Secretary to join me in presentation of this basket. As well as the former senators, I think it's only fitting. Um, of course, you are part of the 32nd. I had to listen to us hearing Chucky all the time about this naming. <laughs> Senator Capehart, you want to join us? Please, this is, this is one of us, we have to, have to do this. On the behalf of the 34th Legislature of the Virgin Islands, we present this gift basket to the family. And thank you because it's not just the public servants that give, the family have to endure all of the ridicule, the hardship that they go through as well. So we really want to thank you for your contribution, Sergi Belgina and Jan Juan Campana, as well as the grandkids. We thank you for your awareness in there. It's actually apple cider. We don't do alcohols. It's actually apple cider. <laughs> thank you very much for your contribution to the people of the Virgin Islands, Senator John A. Bell Sr. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys still having fun? This is so remarkable when we can recognize someone um, of a high stature and caliber that have helped the people of the Virgin Islands to be present and accounted for here physically with us. Please give Mr. John A. Bell Sr. another round of applause. We're almost to the end of the program, but we're still moving. I want to welcome for the remarks the Honorable Tregenza A. Roach Esquire, Lieutenant Governor, U.S. Virgin Islands. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Roach. Uh, thank you, Dr. Colwood, Master of Ceremony. Good morning, Governor Bryan, Senate President Novel Fra Vice President Novel Francis, and to Senator Whitaker and any other uh, 34th legislature member present, to our clergy, Pastor Williams, uh, to the representative of the delegate to Congress, and to our former delegate to Congress, to former senators, Chucky Hansen, the sponsor of this resolution, and to former Senator Cape Hart, to the family of Mr. Bell, because you shared him with us, and to Mr. Bell and to all uh, present this morning. This is a good day. I also want to extend a special uh, greeting to the members, the, this, the employees, of the Bureau of Corrections, led by Director Testamark, because you are engaged in a good work for which you often do not receive the gratitude of this society. And we are grateful for that. During the period of Mr. Bell's service, I worked at the Daily News of the Virgin Islands and I think that was when I first came into contact with him as a senator. And one of the things that 
I was impressed about the same way that I'm impressed with Senator Hanson about. I'd call her Senator Hanson. She always kept insisting, Chucky. But I'd call her Senator Hanson. Was that he had a Virgin Islands perspective. And having lived on each island, St. John, St. Croix, St. Thomas, you could really see that he cared deeply about this territory, about every island in this territory and for all of its people. And he also had a very common sense and matter of fact approach to everything that he did. He was relatable uh, to the people of the Virgin Islands and I'm supremely grateful for that. We've heard his biography, we've heard the accolades I came to know more about him personally when Senator Hansen and I discussed this resolution and I was pleased to support it. Uh, when I became a member of the legislature, it was in my first term of the 30th legislature. And the only thing that I would like to add is that his life is really a testament to how we should look about relating to the people who commit offenses in a society. Because there are those people who believe that you should lock them up and throw the key. And I think by his example, not just by words, but by his example, Mr. Bell exemplified a whole other approach to how we should deal with the persons in our society who sometimes go astray. And probably the best thing that we can do to honor his memory is to commit to really be a place of rehabilitation for the people in our society who are in some cases their most vulnerable moment when they become incarcerated. And we should take up the cause as he had in so many ways to help to shape the people who perhaps need our support most. And when we pour the accolades on a person, the best thing, is to live those accolades and to have them reflected in the work that you do in your society. So I really want to thank Mr. Bell for how he touched every person, how he touched this entire territory, and how we have become the beneficiaries of his good work. God bless you. God bless the Virgin Islands. Thank you all so very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Roach. At this time, I'm asking everyone to stand with me and recognize the Honorable Albert Bryan Jr., Governor, U.S. Virgin Islands. Governor Bryan. Thank you, Kaiser. Good morning, everybody. Please be seated. Uh, good morning, Lieutenant Governor Pastor Williams. Good morning, the Honorable John Bell, Senator, Vice President, Vice President, Novel Francis. Uh, the Honorable Chucky Hansen. After she said protocol, I don't think I need to say any more. I think she said it the best. But I have the unfortunate job of speaking after Trigenza. Wasn't that deep? It's like, he always can get to you, uh, touch it. And me, I'm in my head, there's always a colorful musical going on. And no matter how crazy it is in here, I'm having a good chuckle to myself inside. And I was sitting there thinking, when I read this, did you guys read this? I hope you did. But before I go anymore, before I, because I, go, I always sit there saying, I want to go next, I want to go next, because I'm going to forget what I'm going to say. I want to recognize my Democratic uh, Senate uh, hopeful, Ophelia Nemi Williams. You give her a round of applause. She's here with us today. And also one of my favorite people in the world, Senate uh, hopeful, uh, hopefully getting Maurice James is also <laughs> with us uh, here today um, with us. I ain't supposed to have favorites, but you know. How oh, it is. Um, see, I forget what I was going to say. But I was reading this. Yes. Did you guys read this? John Bell from St. Thomas. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> the thing I was laughing about the most was, wow, maybe one day I'll be accepted as a Christian. <laughs> there is hope for me yet. But I just want to say, um, you know, I always have his um, musicals in my head, it's divine comedy. But uh, then I thought to myself, it's just such, such been, it, 
you know, a great adventure for me being governor. It's, it's the best job in the world. Anybody in here, how much people in here been to Calabash Boom? Raise your hand. I have. Yeah. You know where Calabash Boom is? It's literally the end of the world. <laughs> I mean, it is so far. I mean, and you, you know, you're thinking about Calabash Boom now, eight tough miles over center line down into Coral Bay. This is when St. John he had no paved roads. Because when I was born, 68, and growing up, 72 and 74, going to St. John, all they had was donkey and jeeps. So they sent, literally, Senator Bell, to the last place in the Virgin Islands with all these boys. Can you imagine? And you know, back in those days, there was no way like they were doing the trouble like what young men getting in and uh, young men and women getting in today. You were bad if you were like thief in the name of mango them. You won't go to school. You're running away from, uh, you're talking back to your teachers. And we had a reformatory school and they sent him all the way there and then they brought him to Mandal, you know. I don't know if you guys know John Lucien. Anybody ever heard of John Lucien? Great musician in Virgin Islands, um, jazz, international jazz guitarist and singer. He was at Mandal School as well too. So in those days, real reform. So it, it is so important to have that name on this institution. But it shows that you can come back. And I don't know if I wouldn't ask you to raise your hands but most of us in here have also visited a friend or a loved one in this institution. You know, I served on the Golden Grove uh, Citizens Committee uh, for years, and then I came back and visited here right after I was a commissioner. I walked the grounds, and I've walked this ground several times. And you meet people, I thought they were in the States, but they're here in a correctional facility. Your friends and neighbors that you know, and these people return to our society. So when they come to this institution, we cannot forget them. Right now, we have a great um, equine program that we're instituting here at the, un um, the university. The <laughs> and, and the, and the uh, director always rem reminds me, they're not prisoners, they're inmates. And this is not a prison, it's a correctional facility. And we want to continue to support that, especially now that we have one of our esteemed Virgin Islanders name on that. And you know, if you don't have a chance today, sometime this weekend, or start to talk to our seniors. I mean, the things you learn, it's just amazing. And we're losing so much. And I had the pleasure to sit down with people like Derby. He didn't want me call you a senior, but Derby. And he was telling me about when the people used to go to Puerto Rico on a barge. What used to bring this out? I'm not going to leave the story there. <laughs> you know why? And talking about stories about growing up in St. Croix when the train used to run. How many people you know you had a train in St. Croix? The train used to run and catching the train to school, all the school kids hanging on, about taking trips in a two-wheel cart drawn by horse. These are rich parts of our culture. And, you know, I know John Bell as a political stalwart, as you've seen... Uh, he was represented today. Somebody who was always on the radio, driving, I remember one time, he drive us blows with John DeYoung in 2002 and he helped us win in 2006. <laughs> it shows you how you switch sides as time goes on, how you make friends and lose friends, but we're, and we're all one family here in the Virgin Islands and I think it's, it's so timely that we're giving him this honor during the, an election season because he loved politics uh, uh, to the point where he took the radios, took to the radio. And I miss that old time politics. And when you see, I want my commissioners listening, you see how Chucky do that? That's how it's done. I go, this should be a training tape. That's how it's done. Because we need to, I wish that we could just lock off all the cell stations just for like two weeks and make people get up from behind the desk and walk around and shake people's hands because that's how they had to politic. They didn't have no Facebook where you could post up eight million posts and, and see every, everybody see what you're doing. You have to go out there and actually speak to people. 
Visit them in the communities, knock on their doors. You have to hold fish fry, not because it's a grand thing to do, but you have to get people accumulated so you can find out what was going on. Senators had to work overtime in order to get elected, and it was not a pop-up thing all of a sudden, you're going to run this year and nobody ever hear of you. Because there was no way to get to communicate to that many people that quickly in order for you to be elected. You had to go and do the community service and people had to understand you were a trusted man or woman of the people. Those were the good old days. So today I want to say thank you to Senator John Bell for his contribution to the Virgin Islands. You know, we've been holding a lot of these, the naming of the streets, the naming of institutions, because your legacy haunts you. The things that we are teaching our children today, good or bad, will come back to haunt us or bless us in the future. The way that we honor our parents, the way that we treat them, the way that we honor the people who came before us, these are the traditions that we are teaching our young people to keep and hold true in the Virgin Islands. And if, it don't, if we don't do it well, we will know because they will leave us behind to rot in those weaker years when we are not so strong. So I want to make sure every time, every road naming, every building naming, we not only put the names, but we make people understand the struggle of senators that brought us through a time when the Virgin Islands had, it was just the, elected the first governor. These are the people that wrought the land, the pioneers that actually created the ground of the legislature today. The forming of our independence, the creation of our court system, our transportation systems, our airports. These are the people that laid the framework for what we have today. And the way that we live today. These are the people that brought us out of outhouses and outdoor plumbing, put us into homes with electricity, built Aldo Failing Wapa, Wapa. These are the people that brought us here today. So thank you, John Bell, and thank you to his family from a grateful Virgin Islands. God bless you. Thank you, Governor Brian. At this time, we'll have a musical selection by Mr. L.J. Bratwit. He is a remarkable young man um, from the Charlotte Amali High School. He is one of the, I think, the band director, aren't you? Okay, good. So he will provide um, a musical selection. Thereafter, we'll have a plaque presentation and, of course, the sign unveiling. Thank you, Mr. Bradwitt.
That song is truly fitting for an event such as this. Thank you, Mr. Bradway. At this time, we'll welcome the Honorable Winnie Testamark, along with Mr. John A. Bell Sr., the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Senate Vice President, and family to join us here by the podium for his official plaque on behalf of the Government of the Virgin Islands, the Brian Roach Administration, and the Bureau of Correction. Ms. LeBlanc? Of course, and you, I will never forget you. I apologize for my behavior. <laughs> yes, I behave poorly at times. So the plaque reads, Government of the Virgin Islands, Bureau of Corrections, Official Renaming Ceremony, John A. Bell Adult Correctional Facility, June 9, 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, on the count of three, one, two, three. And this is official signed renaming of the John A. Bell Adult Correctional Facility. As you can see, the wall is handcrafted with stone that talks about the sacrifice integrity, dignity, love, and peace that Mr. Bell has provided for the people of the Virgin Islands and the Bureau of Correction. Please give him a big round of applause. <laughs> so make sure you take your pictures, snap, 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 pictures, pictures.
I'm asking all guests to return to their seats for the last two items on the program. Thank you at this time. All guests. I forgot former Senator Carol Burke. Thank you for joining us as well. I just want to welcome the director, Testamark, to the podium to offer some special remarks and then we will, special thanks, sorry, and then we'll have Chaplain Burkett to give us the benediction. Okay, great. Um, I just want to say again, thanks to everyone. The officer, the office of the governor and lieutenant governor, want to say thank you. Former Senator Ali Alicia Hansen, Office Chucky, <laughs> um, official renaming ceremony committee members. I want to say a special thank you to the Bureau of Corrections family, security and support. Without you, it would not be possible. Again, thank you, thank you. You always, as always, step up to the plate and we make it happen. Despite the challenges, despite the naysayers, we keep rising to the occasion. So I just want to say thank you all for all you do every day on behalf of the Brian Roach administration we say thank you <laughs> and in some additional persons that we need to thank a matter of taste catering the vibe radio station pastor Gerald a Williams miss Alexander thank you mr. Bradwood VIP awards and engraving James family Flores Virgin Islands public broadcasting system and in the mix cakery and cafe and I just want to end with the quote life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others Martin Luther King jr. mr. Burkett good afternoon everyone and um, we are just going to dismiss because it's not morning it is evening and my stomach is making a little noise so I have to definitely do it faster but just before I say anything I could remember in the year 1983 uh, Mr. John Bell uh, met me in this, the warden's office and he gave me a good schooling and he told me how to behave in the prison how to look at inmates how to think of inmates and that's the thing he told me he helped me I'm here for a little while I'm in that prison from 1981 so you know I'm there Miss Brannigan was the uh, chaplain at that time but um, I was the one that been there with her uh, so so I want to thank him so very much for giving me a good schooling and helping me to be what I am today so let's bow in prayer and let's go and eat and let's go home I want to thank you God today I want to thank number one our uh, 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 governor and lieutenant governor and everyone from the top to the bottom from the back to the front and north south east and west I want to thank you for being here today I want to thank God for being here today with us and as we hear everything that was said and done we ask in the name of Jesus that God will be with us that he will bless us that will have a wonderful time not only because of what the ceremony but because God is with us hallelujah the word of God said his rod and his staff will comfort us so father we pray in the name of Jesus that you will lift us us not only not only touch those that are in authority but the inmates oh God that you will touch them that you will anoint them that you will bless them that they will understand who they are glory be to God where they come from and where they can go tomorrow so father we thank you for everything that been said and done we ask your your anointing in this place right now in the name of Jesus as we go be with us. Give us a wonderful lunch. Glory to God that your belly will be filled. Glory to God. Praising you and magnifying you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen.